Hey guys, Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in this video, I want to talk about patterns on the fretboard. Patterns on the fretboard is the number one source of confusion for almost every single beginner slash intermediate guitar player that ever reaches this very specific point. It's like right here, all right? This, this point right here. That point is the point where everyone reaches where you're trying to learn how to solo in key across the neck of the guitar up and down the fretboard in one single key such that let's say you're jamming with a band and the band says hey take a solo in the key of b minor we're all over here jamming in the key of b minor the piano player is playing in b minor the bass player is playing in b minor everyone's in b minor we want you to stay with us we want you to jam in the key of b minor you as a lead guitar player you're like okay i already know how to solo right here in this one little area in the key of b minor but i want to use the whole fretboard I want to use the entire neck of the guitar, and I want to remain in the key of B minor. That is a very specific point. That's, that's this point right there that we're talking about. That's the purpose of this video. That very specific point is exactly where all of the misinformation starts getting fed into your brain. All right? All of it. So why all this confusion? What's the deal? Well, this thing right here, this fretboard right here, has 12 notes on it. No more, no less. There's 12 notes on this fretboard. It looks like a lot more because we have, you know, 22 frets. Some guitars have 24 frets. We have six strings. Some guitars have seven strings. It looks like more than 12 notes, but it's only 12 notes. On a piano, there's also only 12 notes. The difference between a piano and a guitar is that on a piano, you can only go up or down in pitch in one single direction. You can go left or right. If you go left on the piano, then you go down in pitch. If you go right on a piano, then you go up in pitch. On a guitar, you have three directions in which you can go up or down in pitch. You can go down in pitch this way. You can go up in pitch this way. You can go down in pitch that way. You can go up in pitch that way. You can also go diagonally. You can go this way down in pitch. You can go this way up in pitch. You have three ways or three planes of motion for which you can go up or down in pitch on a guitar. For that reason, these notes are, they form this matrix, right? These 12 notes, there's only 12 notes, they form this matrix. And in order to make sense of this matrix of notes such that you can play in one single key, these notes, they form these patterns, all right? And that's that. those patterns are non-existent on the piano. To play in key on a piano, you just have to say, or you have to know the certain combination of white keys and black keys, there, it doesn't have the patterns thing. The guitar it has these patterns. And what's even more confusing about this is that there's more than one way to visualize what is known as the diatonic scale. So the most common ways, the three ways that I always teach are the three patterns way, the five patterns way, and the seven patterns way. All right, so let's just take a look at the three different approaches, the three pattern, the five pattern, and the seven pattern approach. So let's say that we're trying to do this for the key of, say, G major, for example. The band is jamming in the key of G major, or the backing track that you're trying to jam along with is in the key of G major. You want to utilize the entire neck of the guitar playing in the key of G major. In order to do that, you need to know where the seven notes of the G major scale are up and down the entire neck of the guitar, which are G, A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp. Those are the seven notes of the G major scale. So in order to map out those notes, you can do so via the three patterns method, the five patterns method, or the seven patterns method. Let's start out with the seven patterns method. <laughs>
So that was the seven patterns approach to visualizing the diatonic scale for the key of G major. All right. So keep in mind that the numbering or the labeling of these patterns is completely arbitrary. You can call them whatever you want. You can call this pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, pattern four, five, six, and seven. You can assign letters to them. You can you can call this the red pattern. You can call this the brown pattern. You can call this the yellow pattern. You can call them whatever you want. People commonly call them the Ionian mode, the Dorian mode, the Phrygian mode. If that's what you do, if that's what makes sense to you in your head to label these patterns by these modal names, and it allows you to get this job done for this very specific task that you're trying to achieve, then that's fine. All right, you're getting your specific goal accomplished, but just be aware that that's not what modes are. Those are just arbitrary labels that you're assigning to these patterns, all right? Modes is something else. If you want to learn about modes, I'll post some lessons to that below. You can dive into modes. Um, but yeah, so, so arbitrary numbering, arbitrary labeling of these patterns, whatever. You can call this pattern 2, you can call this pattern 12, you can call this pattern 57, whatever allows it to make sense to you in your own head so that you're like, oh, okay, I'm here, I'm playing pattern, whatever. Whatever gets the job done, go for it. Just understand they're not modes, all right? It's a seven patterns approach. So then you have the five patterns approach. So let's just run up through the uh, five patterns again real quick. So what we just did there was we visualized the diatonic scale for the key of G major via the five patterns method. 
We previously did it using the seven patterns method. Now we just did it for the five patterns method. You have options. You can choose the seven patterns approach. You can choose the five patterns approach. You can choose the three patterns approach. You're, you're, it's the same thing. You're trying to play the diatonic scale across the entire neck of the guitar such that you can play in one single key and jam along with a band or a backing track that's also playing in that key. Again, these, uh, these patterns, they're arbitrary. You can label them however you want. You can call this pattern one, two, three, four, five. You can call it pattern A, B, C, D, E, whatever. This is where the confusion with the cage system comes into play. People commonly misunderstand the cage system and they think that this goal, which is right where we're at right here, where we're trying to connect the diatonic scale patterns, they think that that's what the cage system is for. It is not this, they call this the E pattern. They call this the D pattern, the C pattern, the A pattern, and the G pattern. Again, it gets the job done if you if you're if you think you're studying the cage system and that's what you came up with because you're here and this is your specific goal and it allowed you to achieve that specific goal at that specific time and you can now jam with musicians that are playing in a key and you can utilize the whole fretboard. Cool, it got the job done. But you're missing the point of the cage system. That's not the cage system. The cage system is much, much more powerful than that. The cage system magical okay the cage system is mind-blowing stuff for a lot of people because it's all about chords it's all about chord tone targeting it's all about hitting those magical notes it's all about soloing over chord changes it is not about connecting the diatonic scale patterns together all right so if you want to arbitrarily label these patterns as the e pattern and the d pattern and the c pattern a pattern g pattern knock yourself out just understand there's a lot more to the cage system than that. And if you want to learn about all that cage stuff, check out my free lesson, which I will give a link to. I already said that, but I'm saying it again. That's what the cage system is all about. This is not the cage system. This is the five patterns approach to visualizing the diatonic scale. And then you have the three patterns approach. So this is my favorite one because it's the least amount of patterns that needs to be remembered. In my opinion, that makes this the simplest approach to visualizing the diatonic scale. So I have arbitrarily named these three patterns, the home box, the A string home box, and the three note per string pattern. Those are just the names that I came up with. Those are the names that I have, that, that allow me to, you know, assign labels to these different patterns, these three different patterns. Just because one of the patterns is called the three note per string pattern, that does not mean that that's the only three note per string pattern. There's 
the, the seven patterns approach to visualizing the diatonic scale, that's seven three note per string patterns all connected to one another. It's not modes. It's seven three note per string patterns though. So if you like three note per string patterns and you like doing legato runs and stuff like that, then the seven patterns approach may be one that you prefer. In my three patterns approach, home box, A string home box, uh, three note per string pattern. Those are just my arbitrary labels that I assign to them. Some common questions. Which is the best approach to use? The three patterns approach, five patterns approach, or seven patterns approach? And to that, I just say, well, it depends. It depends on what you want to do. The, uh, the seven patterns approach is beneficial because each of the patterns is three notes per string. And people like three note per string patterns because it allows for some nice legato runs. It's nice for alternate picking too because it's down, up, down. And then when you get to the next string, it's up, down, up. And then when you get to the next string, it's down, up, down. So three notes per string allows you to keep with your alternate picking and stuff like that. People like three note per string patterns. If that if that's uh, your thing, if you like three note per string patterns, I love three note per string patterns myself. The seven patterns approach might be for you. The five patterns approach. So people like the five patterns approach because typically one of the first scale systems that you learn on the guitar is the five pentatonic positions. So the five patterns approach to visualizing the diatonic scale is nice because um, it, it, it's basically the five pentatonic positions, but with the addition of the two additional notes, to create the full diatonic scale. The pentatonic scale is just five notes. The diatonic scale is seven notes. So each of these five patterns within the five pattern approach is the pentatonic scale plus two additional notes. Remember, there's only 12 notes in total on this guitar. So pentatonic is five, diatonic is seven. The five pattern approach it, it's, it coincides with the whole five pentatonic position line of thinking. So that's the benefit of the five pattern approach. The benefit of the three pattern approach, as I already said, you only have to memorize three patterns. It's the simplest one in my opinion. Every single scale that I teach on the Zombie Guitar website is done using the three patterns approach, at least in, in the courses and the soloing courses. You can visualize any seven note scale using the three patterns approach. Another question, do these diatonic scale patterns, are they the same for all of the modes of the major scale? And the answer is yes. So once you know this diatonic framework, which is what we just looked at right here, whatever it takes for you to learn the diatonic framework across the entire neck of the guitar, whether you choose to do so via three patterns, via five patterns, or via seven patterns, whatever it takes for you to do that, once you know the diatonic framework, that framework is exactly the same for all seven modes of the major scale. The only difference between each one of the seven modes is which one of the seven notes is dictated as the tonal center within the patterns. Remember, we're only dealing with seven notes here. All right. There's only 12 notes in total on the guitar. In this lesson, we're only focusing on the key signature of G major, which is seven of the 12 total notes. So of these seven notes dictating the first note, which is the note G in this key signature, dictating that note as the tonal center. That's what the Ionian mode is. Dictate the second note as the tonal center. That's where the Dorian mode comes from. Dictate the third note as the tonal center. That's where the Phrygian mode comes from. This is even strengthened when you, when you use this as a soloing framework over the associated chord. So in any given key signature, you have seven chords. In any given key signature, you have seven notes. So first chord, first note, that's your tonal center, Ionian mode. Second chord, second note, that's your tonal center, Dorian mode. Third chord, third note, that's your tonal center, Phrygian mode. Check out my mode series. Uh, it's called This Is Why You Don't Understand Modes. Again, I posted a link to that for a detailed explanation about all that kind of stuff. But in short, that's that's what modes are. So yes, they all share the same diatonic uh, scale patterns. It's just which note you're dictating as the tonal center within the patterns. That's what dictates the mode. That's the answer to that question. Another question, do these patterns apply to minor keys as well? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Because a minor key, typically a minor key, it's just the, the Aeolian mode. That's all it is. A minor key is where you take these patterns, this diatonic framework, 
and the sixth note within the patterns, that's your tonal center, which associates with the sixth chord of the key signature. As I said, any given key signature has seven chords in it. It has seven notes in it. So in the key signature of G major, the sixth chord is the E minor chord. The sixth note is the note E. So play using this diatonic framework. Write chord progressions using the chords that are found in the key of G major, but everything is E, 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 E minor, E minor, E minor. Everything is emphasized at, on your E minor tonal center with the E being your tonal center. There you go. You're playing in a minor key. You're playing the key of E minor. And then the fourth and final question is, is zombieguitar.com as awesome as you make it out to be? You being me. And the answer to that is yes, definitely. Zombie Guitar is very awesome. It's probably even awesomer than you imagine. It's actually the greatest guitar lesson website that has ever been added to the internet. It's the greatest guitar lesson website in the world. All right. Thanks for watching my video. See you next time.